So good evening, everybody, from Mandipattar College, North Garu Hills, Meghalaya, India. Welcome to the three-day virtual workshop on research methods, tools, and techniques for research design. I am Tony Curtis M. Sangma, member IQSC, Mandipattar College, one of the conveners of this workshop and assistant professor in the Department of History. Without much delay, let us come to the inauguration session of the three-day virtual workshop. May I now invite Dr. Matis M. Sangma to give the welcome address. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Matis M. Sangma. Assistant Professor from Mendipata College. At the very outset, I would like to welcome our resource persons, Madam Azra Tazhizi, Language and Linguistics Department, University English Language Teacher as a Foreign Language, Azad University of Marage, Marage City, Iran. Professor Dr. Pratik Razan Hungekar, Pro. Chancellor at the University of Kingdom of Atlantis, Singapore, Wisdom University, Nigeria, Webstone University, Zimbabwe, Unified Theological Seminary, U.S. Scientist, Distinguished Professor and International Speaker, Dr. S. K. Chaudhary, Principal of Mendipata College, Sri Bizebora, IQC Coordinator, Mendipata College, Dr. R. S. Rizin Silvest. President of Cape Comorin Trust, organizing secretaries, coordinators from Independent College, participants from various institutions and in Cape Comorin Trust to this three day international virtual workshop on research methods, tools, and techniques for research design. Indeed, it is a great privilege for me to congratulate each one of you who have joined this virtual workshop. And I hope that this workshop would be a great help, especially for the young scholars who will be pursuing for research studies. I wish everyone all the best and a very warm welcome to each and one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir for welcoming all the resource persons, yes, all the participants. May I now give time to Dr. S. K. Choudhury, Principal Mendipata College, to speak a few words about the Mendipata College. Respected Chairman, respected resource person, and uh, IQC coordinator, Sri Bhaskar Jyoti Bora, and all the members, participants present in this virtual workshop. I welcome you all to this workshop and I am very happy and glad that this workshop has been organized by IQSC Mandiptar College in collaboration with CAP Comrade Trust. And I believe that this workshop will be very, very helpful for the research scholars and they will definitely benefit by it. In, now I want to say something about Mandipatar College because uh, some participants may not know. Mandipatar College is situated in North Garohis and uh, there is only one college in North Garohis district and uh, nearly 2,000 students are studying in this college and the locality is very beautiful. It is <coughs> full of greenery and the hills. And the teachers of this college, they are hardworking, they are committed, and the result of the students is improving day by day. And I hope in future this college will be one of the best colleges of Meghalaya and uh, IQC. Coordinator Sri Bhaskar Jyoti Bora is trying his level best to improve, to develop this college and under his guidance, 
guided many workshops, seminars have been organized, and in future also it will be done by him. And we teachers always cooperate him. And I have faith that whatever target we have achieved till now, in future we will achieve more target, and it will be definitely best college in Meghalaya. And uh, some more thing that is later with college, that in our college there is only one stream, that is our stream with the limited subject, that is English, alternative English, economics, political science, history, philosophy, and other subjects are taught. But in future, we are planning to introduce commerce and science stream also, so that we can benefit the society in a better way. And uh, students in this college, they belong to different tribes. Mostly they are Rabha, Garo, Koch, Rajvansi. They are the students, they are reading here. And uh, not only one district, but nearly 10 districts, students, they come here and they take admission here. And uh, there are two hostels, one boys hostel and girls hostels. They are functioning very smoothly. And uh, all students are very disciplined, well behaved. And they are very happy. They are satisfied with the performance of uh, teachers teaching. And I hope that this college will be definitely one of the best college in future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for briefing us about the Mandipati <coughs> College, the organizer of this workshop. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I would like to give time to Mr. Baskar Joy Debora, IQC coordinator, Mandipati College, to speak about the journey of the college, the aims and objectives of the workshop, and to introduce the uh, today's resource persons. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Sir Tony. Uh, respected Sir Principal, Honorable Dr. S. K. Sodhuri, uh, Madam Vice Principal, Srimati L. D. Sira, uh, resource persons of today's workshop, uh, Ma'am Azra Tazhizi, and Sir Professor Dr. Pratik Rajan Mungekar. President of Cap Comorin Trust, Honorable Sir Dr. R. S. Rezin Silvest. Convener, uh, Sir Tony Curtis M. Sangma. Coordinator, Dr. Subra Jamal. Assistant Professor, Government College of Education, Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. And also club member of Cap Comorin Trust. Organizing Secretary, Dr. Salja Basudeva. Associate Professor, Department of Political Science. Sahit Captain Vikram uh, Batra Government Degree College, Palampur, Himachal Pradesh, uh, also a member, club member of Cap Comorin Trust, co coordinators from Mandipathar College and Cap Comorin Trust, faculty members from Mandipathar College, and participants from all across the world. Good evening to each and every one of you from Mandipathar College, Meghalaya. I am Sri Bhaskar Jyoti Bora, coordinator of the Internal Quality Assurance Cell, IQSC. I welcome all of you to this three-day international virtual workshop on research methods, tools, and techniques for research design. Uh, today is a historic day for Mandipathar College as it is organizing an international workshop for the first time. It has been a long journey to reach up to this level. The journey towards quality education in the rural areas of Mandipathar was started in the year 1971 when Mandipathar College was established. And it got culminated in the year 2018 when Mandipathar College was assessed and accredited by NAC under the leadership of our former principal, Madam Srimati Aji Momin, and former IQC coordinator, Dr. Motis M. Sangma. Our journey towards quality upgradation continued after the first cycle assessment and accreditation. This year in 2023, Mandipathar College is again ready to submit its self-study report to NAC for the second cycle assessment and accreditation. This workshop is one of the biggest dreams of the IQSC of Mandipathar College 
that came into reality today. I am thankful to Dr. R. S. Rezin Silvest, President of Cape Comorin Trust, that it has become possible within a very short span of time because of the successful collaboration of Madhipathar College with Cap Comorin Trust. Behind all the activities of IQSC and Madhipathar College is, of course, our sir principal, Dr. S.K. Choudhury, and his visionary leadership. He took SIRS as a principal in SIRS last year on 1st March 2022. And this year in 2023 alone, perhaps in the history of Madhipathar College, maximum number of seminars, workshops, and events have been organized not only by the IQSC, but also by Women's Cell, uh, NEP Implementation Committee, Library Advisory Committee, all the departments, NSS unit, and also Mandipathar College Cultural Heritage Club. I'm really grateful to Sir Dr. S.K. Choudhury for all his leadership and guidance provided to the institution of Mandipathar College. Coming to this, uh, to this workshop, let me inform you that this workshop will be focusing primarily on research methods, tools, and techniques for research design. The aim of this workshop is to facilitate the researchers of any discipline to gain advanced knowledge on research writing and publication. Throughout the workshop, you will be involved in high-level academic training to enhance your research writing skills and publication knowledge. Uh, let me now also introduce the resource persons of today's workshop to you. Uh, we have two resource persons today who will be uh, uh, making the presentations. Our first resource person uh, is Ma'am Dr. Azra Taz Hizi. Uh, uh, is an university English language teacher from Iran. And an international intern internship uh, University Global Edu Leader Awardee in 2022. She is also the Sustainable Procurement and Supply Chain Ambassador and also a recipient of Peace Ambassador Honorary Royalty Award USA. Uh, we welcome you, Madam. And our second resource person is Sir Professor Dr. Pratik Rajan Mungekar. Sir Mungekar is a scientist, professor, counselor, global educator, published author, and an international speaker. He is the first Indian to be appointed as the Planetary Minister of Sustainable Development of newly emerging the Kingdom of Atlantis. He is the first youngest Indian whose book, Introduction to Sustainable Development Goals, is now part of Atlantean education program. Sir is the first youngest Indian to receive more than 300 honorary doctorates from all over the world. Sir is also the first Indian who has 850 plus international, national and state awards, six national patents, 15 world records at the age of 28 for his contribution in the field of teaching and research. And the list of achievement of Sir Mungekar is endless. Uh, I am equally thrilled and excited, like all other participants, to learn from our resource persons from their presentations today. So without much delay, I would like to put my speech here. Thank you all very much. Uh, now I would like to request Sir Tony Curtis MC to kindly invite the resource persons to deliver their presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sir BJ Bora, for briefing us about the journey of the college, aims and objectives of the workshop, and introduction of uh, today's speakers. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, we'll come directly to the first technical session of the workshop. Today, we have uh, two resource persons, Madam Azra Tatsiji and uh, Professor Dr. Adra uh, Mungekar, sorry. Uh, first, I want to invite Madam Adra Tatsidi to speak on the topic, the challenges and opportunities of conducting reflective research in multilingual classrooms. Uh, may I uh, request Madam uh, Adra Tatsidi uh, to speak 
on this topic. Hi. Hi. Hi, madam. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, just I try to join with laptop for um, for sharing my presentation. I have a little uh, connection problems, unfortunately, here. I try to join just a, one minute to join with laptop to share my PPT. No problem, madam. I think I joined, yes. Can you see me via other device? Uh, not, not yet, madam. I am there, I can see myself. Not in, not in, not in, not in, not in. Yes, ma'am. Can you see my Can slides see now? My slides now? Oh, it's not visible. Yeah. No, how are you? I think now things are visible. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are visible. Okay. Okay, I will continue. Thanks. And um, please unmute your audio, ma'am. Uh, now can I see now? Can you see? Can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay, I will continue. There, there are two main ways to think about technology for language learning and teaching. As providing teaching resources for your technology may have only been a chalk and blackboard. Later, audio and video recording and playback equipment were added. Now we have word Web, way of accessing information and our internet. This means computer are online dictionaries, grammar, slide checkers for us. Providing enhanced learning experiences. Technology provides more resources which, which teachers and students uh, greater access to target language. As a result, it has potential to change where and when learning takes place. It can even shape how we view per perspective of uh, nature of what is being taught. Technology makes uh, possible, technology makes possible greater individualization, social interaction and reflection on language. Why oh, use multimedia? Excuse me, are you projecting your screen now? Uh, not, uh, slides are not visible? No, we are not able to, I'm not able to see the screen now. Uh, no, okay, no, no, no. okay, okay, I will, uh, I will share again, okay. Sorry for technical problems.
I think that now are visible, yes? No, no, no. 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 Yes, ma'am, yes, you are no. visible. Okay, okay. I will, come, I will start again. Introduction. There are two main ways to think about technology for language learning and teaching. As providing teaching resources for years, technology may have only been chalk and blackboard. Later, audio and video recording and playback equipment were added. Now we have World Wide Web a way of accessing information over internet. This means computer are online dictionaries, grammar, and slide checker for us. Providing enhanced learning experience. Technology provides more resources which teachers can use. It also provides learners with greater access to target language. As a result, it has potential to change where and when learning takes place. It can even shape how we view nature of what is being taught. Technology makes possible greater individualization, social interaction, and reflection on language. Why we use multimedia, multimodal way? in multicultural, multicultural, multilingual class, online classes. Multimedia activities encourage students to work in groups, express their knowledge in multiple ways, solve problems, re revise their own work, construct knowledge. Advantages include real-world skills related to technology, the value of teamwork, effective collaboration techniques. We can see. Technology has become an important role in the field of language education. With the rapid development of artificial intelligence and natural language processing technologies, several grammar checkers are introduced as writing tools for language learners and teachers. Language learners can receive immediate corrective and positive feedback, constructive feedback from these grammar checkers. Technologies also have greatly increased the opportunity for students and teachers to receive input outside of the classroom. You can see, if you can imagine, it will happen for us in the future by IOU artificial intelligence, and can read our minds in your idea. The challenges and opportunities of conducting reflective research in multi Lingual classroom. Multilingual, multicultural, online, artificial intelligence technology based classroom are becoming increasingly, increasingly common in today's globalized world. Um, these large classrooms consist of inclusive students who speak different languages and come from your cultural background. Conducting research in such classrooms presents both challenges and opportunities, particularly when it comes to reflective research. Reflective research involves examining one's own experiences and beliefs to gain insight into particular phenomena. In this investigation, researchers will discuss the challenges and opportunities, challenges and opportunities of conducting reflective research in multilingual classrooms. Reflective research is a process of self-examination, critical thinking that involves analyzing all own, own experiences, beliefs, and actions. It is an essential component of teacher education programs that it helps teachers to develop a deeper understanding of teaching practices, how they impact student learning in artificial intelligent technological based classrooms. However, conducting reflective research in multilingual online classrooms present unique opportunities and challenges that require careful consideration. The use of artificial intelligence technology in language learning has become increasingly popular in recent years. Multilingual online artificial intelligence technology based classrooms offer a unique opportunity for conductive reflective research and which can help teachers researchers gain a deeper understanding of benefits and challenges of use AI technology in language learning. In this article, we will explore these challenges and opportunities of reflective research in multilingual online classes. Reflective research. 
Reflective research is a type of research that involves reflecting on all the own experiences of the learning to gain insight to particular phenomena in context of language learning. Research can help teachers, researchers understand how students learn, what challenges they face, and how they can improve their teaching practices. Multilingual online artificial intelligence technology based classroom. Multilingual online artificial intelligence technology based classroom are virtual classrooms that use artificial intelligence technology to facilitate language learning and teaching. These classrooms are designed to provide students with personalized learning experiences that are tailored to their individual needs and preferences, customized way. They offer a range of features such as interactive exercises, real-time feedback, and adaptive assessment according to their needs. Opportunities for reflective research. There are several opportunities for conductive, uh, conducting reflective research in multilingual online artificial intelligent technology-based classrooms. These include one, understanding student engagement. Reflective research can help teachers and researchers understand how students engage with artificial intelligence used in classrooms. This can include examining factors such as motivation, interest, and attention span. Identifying challenges. Reflective research can also identify challenges that students face when using artificial intelligence in learning language, language learning. Can include issues related to technological uh, difficulties, language barriers, and or cultural differences. Improving teaching practices. Reflective research can provide insight to how teachers can improve their teaching practice when using artificial intelligence technology in language learning. This can include identifying effective strategies for integrating artificial intelligence into lessons, developing new approaches, methods designed for assessment, enhancing student outcomes. Finally, reflective and research can help improve students' outcome by identifying most effective ways to artificial intelligence in language learning. This can include developing personalized learning plans, providing target fit targeted feedback, or using adaptive assessment according to their needs. There are also many other opportunities for conducting reflective research in multilingual classroom. One opportunity is the diversity yeah. of diversity well, then... of perspective that sure. students bring to the classroom. Students from different cultural backgrounds may have unique insights into educational practice that research may not have consider, considered before. Another opportunity is the potential for cross-cultural learning. Researchers who conduct reflective research in multilingual classroom can learn about different cultures, languages, and educational practices that they may not have encountered before. Finally, sorry, finally conducting reflective research in multilingual classrooms can lead to development of new teaching strategies and approaches that are more inclusive and effective for all students. By reflecting on their own experience and beliefs, researchers can identify areas where they can improve their teaching practice and create more supportive learning environment for all students. One of the challenges uh, conducting research, reflective research in multilingual classroom is language barriers. Language barriers can make it difficult for researchers to communicate with students and understand their experience and needs. This can lead to misunderstanding and misinterpretation of data, which can affect the validity and reliability of research findings. Another challenge is cultural differences. Students from different cultural backgrounds may have different beliefs, values, attitudes to our education. These differences can affect how they perceive their learning experience and how they respond to research questions. Researchers need to be aware of these differences and take them into account when conducting reflective research. A third challenge is complex multilingual classroom. Multilingual classroom are dynamic environment. Sorry, can you see my slides or not visible? No, ma'am. 
Okay, I will share again. Sorry. Unfortunately, it's a bad connection. Maybe we are hearing very clearly your voice, ma'am. Yes, yes. I try to use two devices uh, because uh, connection problems. I join again. Sorry for this. Please carry on, ma'am. We are hearing very clearly your voice. Yes, yes. I uh, I share my uh, PPT from other device because this reason I try to share again my slides. Yeah. Yes, yes. I I share. I will share now again. Just a second. We are hearing very clearly your voice, ma'am. Yes, yes. Please carry on. Yes, I, I I share my slides again. Try to share slides. Yeah, just a second. Yes, yes. I I continue and will share again slides. Yes. Uh, a search learning is complex in our multilingual classrooms. Multilingual classrooms are dynamic environments that are constantly changing as students come and go. It makes it difficult for researchers to establish a stable research environment and collect data over an extended period. Now I think you can see my slide, yes? No, no, ma'am. Madam, yeah, from it's admin. visible for me now. It's not visible, madam. From the admin side, we have shared our mail ID. Please share your PPT in this mail ID. We will share from our side. OK. Oh, no. just a second. Yes, yes, I will share again, yes. Now, uh, now uh, it will be visible. I think now it will be visible. Yes, ma'am. Is visible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. A third, a third challenge is complexity of multilingual classroom. Multilingual classrooms are dynamic environments that are constantly changing as students come and go. This makes it difficult for researchers to establish a stable research environment and collect data over an extended period. Language barriers. One of the most significant challenges for conducting reflective research in multilingual online classrooms is language barriers. In many cases, the students may not be fluent in language used for instruction, making it difficult for them to express their thoughts and ideas effectively. This can lead to misunderstanding, misinterpretations, making it challenging for teachers to gain or a clear understanding of their students' experiences. Cultural differences, another challenge is cultural differences. Students from different cultural backgrounds may have different expectations and beliefs about education which can impact their learning experiences and teachers need aware of these differences and take them to, into account when conducting reflected research. Technical issues, technical issues such as poor internet connectivity and malfunctioning functioning equipment can also pose challenging when conducting reflected research such as no, you, you see it. Research in multilingual online classroom issues and disrupt learning process make it difficult for teachers to gather accurate data. Time constraints. Time constraints are another challenge when conducting reflective research in multilingual online classroom. Teachers may have limited time to observe students or conduct interviews due to scheduling, conflict, or other obligations. Privacy. 
concern. Privacy concerns are also a significant challenge when conduct evaluated reflective research in multilingual online classroom. Teachers must ensure that they protect their student privacy while collecting data and sharing findings with others. Strategies for overcoming challenges. Use multimodal communication strategies. To overcome language barriers, teachers can use multimodal communication strategies such as visual aids or videos to help students understand concepts. Teachers can encourage students to use their native language when expressing their thoughts and ideas. Build the relationships with students. Building relationships with students is essential in our common cultural differences. Teachers can learn about their students' cultural beliefs by engaging in conversation and activities that promote educational cultural awareness. Plan for technical issues. Teachers can plan for technical issues by having backup plans such as no and having backup plans in place such as alternative communication methods or rescheduling, observation, or interviews. Prior time management. Prior time management is crucial when conducting reflective research in multilingual online classroom. Teachers can schedule observation and interview during times that are convenient for both themselves and their students. Ensure privacy production. Teachers can ensure privacy fidelity by obtaining informed uh, consent from students before collecting data and using secure methods to store and share findings. In recent years, the use of artificial intelligence in education has become increasingly popular. One area where artificial intelligence is being used in English teaching, uh, multimodal and multilingual online artificial intelligence-based classes have emerged as alternative to traditional classroom-based English language teaching, and, and we will compare and contrast multilingual, multimodal online classes with traditional ELT classes. Multimodal, multilingual online classes are characterized by the use of technology, AI, AI such as video conferencing, chat box, and Chatbots virtual reality to deliver language instruction. These classes are often conducted remotely, allowing students to learn from anywhere in the world. In contrast, traditional ELT classes are conducted face-to-face -face in physical classroom, in-person classroom. One advantage of multimodal, multilingual online technology-based classes is that they offer greater flexibility than traditional ELT classes. Students can access more uh, access course material and participate in class discussion at any time from anywhere with internet connection. This flexibility allows students to fit their language learning around other com uh, commitments such as work or family. Another advantage of multimodal, multilingual online classes is that they can be personalized to meet the needs of individual learners. And AI-powered chatbots can provide instant feedback on grammar, vocabulary, or virtual reality. Reality simulations can provide immersive language practice opportunities. This personalization can help students learn more effectively efficiently than a, in a traditional classroom setting. Sorry. Yes. 
However, there are also some disadvantages to multimodal multilingual online classes. One disadvantage is that they lack the social interaction as emotional social interaction that occurs in traditional classroom setting. Students may miss out on opportunities for face-to-face -face communication with their peers and teachers, which can be an important aspect of important aspect of language learning. Another dis disadvantage is that technology glitches or connectivity issues can disrupt learning experience. Technical difficulties may cause this delays or interruption during class session, which can be frustrating for both students and teachers. Multimodal multilingual online classes offer greater flexibility personalization than traditional ELT classes. However, they may lack social and face-to-face -face communication acres in traditional classroom setting. Uh, ultimately, the choice between these two approaches to ELT will depend individual preference and learning needs. The integration of multimodal, multilingual online artificial intelligence have revolutionized the field of English language teaching. This technology has enabled teachers to create personalized learning experiences for their students, resulting in improved outcomes, positive outcomes. And we explored the benefits of using multimodal, multilingual online artificial intelligence ELP. Firstly, multimodal in multilingual online artificial intelligence tools provide students with a variety of learning resources. These resources include videos, audio recording, interactive quizzes such as Kahoot games, and using these resources, students can learn at their own pace in a way that suits their learning style because every student are unique and need unique personalized context. Additionally, these resources can be accessed from anywhere at any time, making it easier for a student to study outside of the classroom. Secondly, use of artificial intelligence in LT allows for personal learning needs and algorithm can analyze student data, provide feedback based on their strengths and weakness. Feedback can be used to create personal study plans, cater or to each student's individual needs. And students are more engaged in their studies, are more motivated and inspired likely to achieve better outcomes. Certainly, multimodal, multilingual online classes enable teachers to track student progress more effectively. With the help of algorithms, teachers can monitor student performance and identify areas where they need additional support. This information can be used to adjust teaching strategies and provide ta targeted interventions that improve student outcomes. Finally, use of multimodal multilingual IOU tools promote language diversity in ELT classrooms. With the help of translation software, words recognition or image recognition, image text tools, students from different linguistic backgrounds can participate in class activities without, without, oh, sorry, again, uh, I think you can see my slides, yes? Can you see my slides? No, ma'am. Okay, I will do it again. Sorry. No, I think are visible. It will appear so. Yes, ma'am. Is visible now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. You are visible. Okay. Okay. No, no. The slide is Finally. not visible till now. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes. Finally, the use of multi-modal multilingual online tools 
promote, promote language diversity in ELT classroom. With the help of translation software, voice recognition technology, text recognition, and students from different linguistic backgrounds can participate in class activities without feeling excluded or marginalized. This promotes inclusivity and creates more welcoming learning and fun environments for all students in the world. The integration of multimodal, multilingual online classes transform ELT by providing students not visible yet. Yes, I think. Yes, ma'am. Not visible till now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Just a second. It's been, uh, it's been up here soon, I think. Here is visible for me. Is visible? No, ma'am. Oh, sorry for this problem. I don't know what happened. May I share your email for me? Oh, no, it is visible, I think. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly check yes. the chat box. Mail ID is there. Okay. Now is visible. Now is visible. It will appear soon. It is it show it shows for me. Yes. Uh, the integration of multimodal multilingual online tools has transformed ELT by providing students with personalized learning experiences that cater to their individual needs. To their individual needs. It enables it also enables teachers to track students progress more effectively and promote language diversity in classroom. As technology continues to evolve, it is likely that artificial intelligence will play an even greater role in ELT for further improving student outcomes. Multimodal refers to use of multiple, multiple modes or forms of communication such as text, image, audio, video, multi, Lingua refers to ability to communicate in multiple languages. Online refers to use of digital technologies and internet-based classes. Artificial intelligence refers to communicate computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence, such as natural language processing and machine learning. In English language teaching, uh, say data analysis in crucial as like all assessing student language proficiency, academic writing skills, multimodal, multilingual classes, tools, and can enhance this process by providing more accurate and efficient feedback on student essays. For instance, artificial intelligence based system can analyze students' essays from grammar, vocabulary, coherence, other linguistic features in multiple languages. It can also provide feedback on use of multimodal elements such as image videos to enhance essays effectiveness. Moreover, artificial intelligence-based system can adapt to individual student need to by providing personalized feedback based on this strength and weakness and can help students improve their writing skills more effectively than traditional methods. There are also some challenges associated with using multimodal multilingual online classes and tools approaches in ELT. Uh, one challenge is ensuring that system is accurate and reliable in analyzing essays across different languages and modalities. Another challenge is ensuring that system provides feedback that is both informative and actionable for students. Requires designing user 
in friendly interfaces that allows students to understand and act upon feedback provided by system. And these tools uh, have uh, an approaches, online approaches have great potential for enhancing ELT essay data analysis by providing more accurate and efficient feedback on students' writing. Uh, careful consideration must be given to ensure that these systems are accurate, reliable, and user-friendly. Outcomes of these classes and tools uh, Artificial intelligence-based classes in ELT can be analyzed through various data points. Some key areas that can analyze include student engagement, level of engagement students in class can be measured through various metrics such as participation in discussion, completion of assignments, and attendance. This data can help identify areas where students are struggling and need additional support. Language proficiency. Language proficiency of students can be assessed through various tests and assignments and can help identify areas where students need to improve their language skills. Learning outcomes. The learning outcomes of class can be measured by assessing how well students have achieve the learning objectives set for the course data can help identify areas where course needs and are problematic to be improved and modified by our students or teacher artificial intelligence performance um, uh, system used in the class can also be analyzed includes assessing its accuracy identifying errors providing feedback to a student overall analyzing these data points can pro provide valuable insight into effectiveness of multimodal multilingual um, artificial intelligence based classes in ELT help improve future and uh, future of such classes. Use of multimodal, multilingual online artificial classes uh, in English language teaching can have several positive outcomes. There are several potential benefits. Personalized link learning artificial intelligence can analyze learning patterns, preference individual students, provide personalized feedback and guidance, learn at their own uh, pace and way, and switch their learning styles and unique styles according to their needs. Enhance engagement and provide the interactive activities, um, engaging interactive uh, fun environments for students. And improve language in language learning skills, uh, such as uh, chat box and as we told, uh, reading, writing, and all skills, uh, skill in improvements, feedbacks for grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary usage, and increase accessibility. Uh, classes that use artificial intelligence based tools can be accessed from anywhere, anytime, and participate all students from every place in the world. And multilingual support can support multiple language, which is particularly useful for ELT classes where students have come from different linguistic backgrounds and provide more inclusive instruction that meets needs of all learners from all different backgrounds and language and cultures. You also create a, adaptive, adaptive uh, and uh, personalized and customized learning experiences and also uh, analyze students' language abilities, provide targeted feedback on areas, problematic areas. In addition, use of critical thinking skills is essential in ELT, involve analyzing information, evaluating arguments, making informed decisions, and help students develop critical thinking skills by providing them opportunity to analyze data and make informed decisions. It is important to note that use of artificial intelligence should not replace human interaction in the classroom. Teachers play a crucial role in guiding students' learning experiences and providing support when needed. Our integration of these online tools in ELT classes can greatly enhance students' learning experiences and can help them develop critical thinking and creative skills. And multimodal, multilingual, artificial intelligence-based classes 
can be powerful tool for enhancing critical thinking skills and creativity in English language teaching by incorporating artificial intelligence technology into ELT instruction. Teachers can create a more engaging and interactive learning environment that promotes critical thinking and problem solving. One way to use artificial intelligence in ELT is use of computer programs that algorithms designed to simulate conversation interaction with human users and programs to provide uh, uh, different feedbacks on language use in different in environments. Another way is use of virtual reality. Also, uh, VR allows students to immerse themselves in simul simulated environments that replace, replicate the real world situation, such as ordering food in a restaurant, navigating a city by using virtual technology. Uh, students can participate their language skills in safe control environment while also developing their critical thinking skills and creativity by making decisions and solving problems. Also, it can uh, analyze student data and performance metrics and uh, algorithms can identify areas where students need additional support or practice. And, can help students develop their critical thinking by targeted feedback and guidance to that environment. Artificial intelligence refers to ability machines and perform cognitive tasks by thinking, like thinking, perceiving, learning, problem solving, decision making, and ways people use their brain to perceive, learn, receive reason of decide the action. Especially make a lot of footprint in education such as automated feedback, intelligent filtering, learning analytics, and virtual agents, virtual reality, and online predictive examination quizzes such as card game. Artificial intelligence is an area of computer science that emphasizes the creation of intelligent machines that work and react like humans. Some of activities computer artificial intelligence are designed for speech recognition, learning, planning, problem solving. You know, one of them is called quiz online test games and is game based learning platform that makes it easy to create, share and play learning games or try via quizzes in minutes. Then you can create your login ID on and add own code in simply by adding all given questions into it. And created, you can initiate initiate the quiz from your ID and students can participate in it, putting their game pin. And relay. Gain awareness of where artificial intelligence is relevant in day-to-day -day lives. We will relate using a story speaker, interactive story writing. A story speaker is a tool that lets anyone creating, talking, interactive stories with no code. You can write a story in Google Docs, push a button, and play it instantly on your Google Home. I think my slides are not movable, yes? No, now is, uh, now is okay. okay. Uh, yes, story speaker example, you can see in the image. I need to go to the kitchen. Can you tell me the way? Walk a few stages off. You can see ahead, then turn to your right and enter the corridor on the left in the kitchen. Go goal, gain awareness above SDG goals and find solution of all these using artificial intelligence. You see in the picture? Data acquisition. Students will learn how to acquire 
data from reliable and authentic resources and sources will understand how to analyze the data features which affect their problem and also will learn concepts of uh, system maps. The purpose of this section is to introduce the concept system map and elements relationship and feedback loop. Students will explore different types of graphs using data visualization and will be able to find trends and patterns of, of it. Decision theory. Decision theories are similar to concept of a story speaker. It is role-based artificial intelligence model which helps to imagine in predicting what an element is with the help of various decision rules fitted to it. And goals, you know our goals in this uh, essay, expert system, more than human intelligence cognitive, solving practical problems in the light of attempting to deal with problems existing intelligence system, for example, problems of human learning or emotional difficulties and designing useful new intelligent or semi-intelligent machines. Hawking and Musk warning, success in creating artificial intelligence would be the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might also be the last unless we learn how to avoid the risks. We need to be super careful with artificial intelligence, potentially more dangerous than nuke. You see, myths and realities. Miss Vaughn, we will never create artificial intelligence with human-like intelligence. Reality, we already have computers that match to, uh, match to human capacities in games like this and go, stock market trading and conversation computers and the algorithm that drive them can only get better and tell and it will only be a matter of time before they excel at nearly any human activity. Miss two. Artificial intelligence will be conscious reality. Common assumptions about machine intelligence that it will be conscious, that is, it will actually think the way human do. What is more, critics uh, like Microsoft co-founder Paul believe that we are yet to achieve artificial general intelligence, uh, for example, an intelligence capable of performing any intellectual task that human can because we lack scientific theory of consciousness. Mystery. We should be afraid of artificial intelligence in your idea. Reality, Facebook founder Mark said we shouldn't fear artificial intelligence, saying it will do an amazing amount of good in the world. He is half all right. We are poison, poison to reap tremendous benefits from artificial intelligence, from self-driving cars, to creation of new medicine. But there is no guarantee that every instantation of artificial intelligence will again. Miss Four, artificial super intelligence will be too smart to make mistakes. Reality, researcher and founder of surfing summary, summary robots said that most artificial intelligence scenarios are incoherent and arguing that these scenarios always involve an assumption that the artificial intelligence is supposed to say, I know that destroying humanity is the result of glitch in my design, but I am committed to do it anyway. Miss Five, machines would be out of control. Reality improving artificial intelligence machine means greater control mechanism. And Miss Six,
We will be destroyed by artificial super intelligence. Reality there is no guarantee that artificial intelligence will destroy us or that we won't find ways to control and contain it. As artificial intelligence theories uh, said, the artificial intelligence does not hate you or nor does it love you, but you are made of, of atoms and which it can use for something else. Why research I artificial intelligence safety? In near term goal of keeping artificial intelligence impact on society beneficial motivates research in many areas from economic law to technical topics such as verification, validity, security, and control. Whereas it may be little more than minor users of your laptop crashes gets right, it becomes all more important that artificial intelligence system die, uh, does what you want to do if it controls your car, your airplane, your pacemaker, your automated trading system, or your power grid. And in long term, an important question is what will happen if the quest for a strong artificial intelligence success and an artificial intelligence system becomes better than humans at all cognitive tasks? Advantages. We mentioned previously personalized learning and based on needs and preferences, interactive learning through use of multimedia resources and flexibility anywhere, anytime students want to learn any pace and convenience, cost effective and the classes that cost effective compared to traditional classroom teaching as they eliminate the need for physical infrastructure and reduce traveling. Real-time feedback. Real-time feedback to students on their performance, enabling them to improve their language skills quickly. And this advantage, lack of human interaction, also motivation in engagement for their engagement, technical issues, limited socialization and interaction opportunities, limited teacher-student interactions, potential for teaching, potential for cheating as also in cheating as the easier for students to access external resources during assessment and exams. Overview. This online class aims to equip English language teachers with knowledge and skills tools for foster critical thinking creativity in their students using artificial intelligence through a combination of interactive lectures and hands-on activities, collaborative projects, participants will explore various artificial intelligence-based approaches to teaching critical thinking and creativity in ESC. Learning objectives understand importance of critical thinking and creativity in ELT, explore different tools and techniques for promoting critical thinking and creativity, creativity develop strategies for integrating to ELT class plans, design engaging activities, encourage students to think critically and creatively, collaborate with peers to create projects incorporated into ELT class plans. And course outline, module one, introduction, critical thinking and creativity, design critical thinking and importance of critical thinking and creativity and overview of approaches and tools for promoting. And also here is so many of our work. You see in there. and assessment participants will be assessed based on their participation, unlike class activities, combination of assignment and quality of collaborative projects. By the end of this online class, participants will have gained a deeper understanding of critical thinking and creativity and can enhance their skills. Practical strategies for integrating artificial intelligence to listen plan and creating engaging activities to promote critical thinking and creativity. And also, you see uh, the critical thinking in ELT refers to ability to analyze information, object, evaluate argument, make informed decision, and 
generating new ideas, solutions to problems, personalized feedbacks, and, and also help students to identify problematic areas. Also, facilitate collaborative learning, creating virtual discussion forums, and share ideas, perspective, different topics, and collaborative learning environment. Also, we have um, offsite of thinking, creative uh, feedbacks, and at the end, in conclusion, artificial intelligence based classes. Uh, in has immense potential in enhancing critical thinking and creativity by providing personalized feedback based on students' responses, various resources, facilitating collaborative learning environments, encouraging critical thinking, thinking for multiple perspectives, also providing tools for creative expression. Thank you very much for attention and sorry for many technical issues. Thank you for having me here and listening. Thank you very much, Madam, for your deliberation of important related to the challenges and opportunities of conducting reflective research and building up groups. Hope that our participants have a lot from your presentation. Uh, the participants can ask questions now. <clears throat> If any query are there on the presentation, you can ask. Hello. Uh, one question I would like to ask. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was such a beautiful presentation covering all aspects uh, related to the topic. So one uh, question I would like to ask from my side, madam. So since uh, you have explained about that this multi-model, multilingual online AI, uh, it will help the critiquing, uh, critical thinking skills. It will help uh, in uh, the creative skills. So what yes. uh, I want to ask you the question is that, madam, will uh, this uh, AI tools obliterate the scope of serendipity in research? Sorry, may I explain more about your question? Sorry. Okay, madam. Actually, it has been argued that uh, introducing AI to creative practices destroys spontaneity, intuition, and serendipity. You mean uh, I, I, uh, You mean artificial intelligence tools may destroy uh, human uh, creativity or critical thinking? You mean uh, this? Critical means a uh, spontaneity or intuition or learning through serendipity. That aspect I want to ask, madam, will, will uh, it obliterate or will it destroy? I think it depends. You know, we can uh, say that uh, if uh, we need uh, to use artificial intelligence in our uh, classes, it depends how we use it. Because, for example, I use artificial intelligence more. For example, uh, um, we, we use artificial in this way. We, we, we change or convert image to PDF, PDF or we uh, convert um, word to PDF, we convert PDF to word, we convert PDF to uh, text, or we uh, also speech recognition. Uh, artificial intelligence has uh, many, many uh, positive uh, uses of uh, it in our classroom. Uh, as we said, the chat box interactive, we can use in interactive way by uh, games, uh, by uh, it depends because uh, it, it it is controlled by our mind. Not uh, it's, uh, it depends how we uh, use it. 
according to our mind creativity. If we are creative in using uh, artificial intelligence in our classes, then we get result, uh, creative, uh, creative result by using artificial intelligence. But if uh, we don't use uh, in positive, uh, positive and creative way uh, of artificial intelligence, I think um, uh, we, we will not be able to get a positive result. So it depends how you use it, how you think about it. Without, um, it may be, uh, be destructive or positive, uh, constructive. It depends how you use it by your mind and thinking, reasoning, how you want to use it, because we can use it many ways, and, uh, but it depends how you use it. Thank you, madam. I got it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Very nice explanation. Thank you, madam. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Any other questions from other participants, please? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, I can okay, hear. Okay. Hi. Hello, how are you? It was a nice session. Okay, I would like to request the organizers. Can I start with my lecture? Because I have another lecture on 8.15. Okay, sir. Okay, it will be quite okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I just yeah. share my PPT on the given mail ID. Please share the PPT so that we can start. And hello, Ajra. You are amazing. Hi. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. Great insights and input. Congratulations. Thank you. You're so interested in your topic, too. I will be here. Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Am I audible, everyone? Yes, sir. No, okay. Sorry, audible. So, yes, okay. sir. I'll tell you uh, <clears throat> when I want the next slide. Okay. Yes, sure. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, here I begin with my today's topic. I, Professor Dr. Pratik Rajan Mangekar, I'm a scientist, professor, counselor, global educator, international speaker, and published author. And recently, I'm working as a vice chancellor for four universities. So today's my topic is research methodology. So what is research methodology? <clears throat> research methodology simply refers to the practical how of any given piece of research. More specifically, it's about how a researcher systematically designs a study to ensure valid and reliable results that address the research aims and objectives. For example, how did the researcher go about deciding what data to collect and what data to ignore, uh, what to collect it from in research? This is called sampling design. How to collect it? This is called data deletion methods, or how to analyze it. This is called data analysis methods. So, uh, you know, in a dissertation, thesis, academic journal articles, or, or pretty much any formal piece of research, you will find a research methodology chapter or a section which covers the aspects, you know, which I mentioned just now. Importantly, a good methodology in a dissertation or thesis examples or explains not just what methodological choices were made, but also explains why they were made. In other words, the methodology should justify the design choice by showing uh, that the chosen methods and techniques are the best fit for the research aims and objectives and will provide valid and reliable results. So a good research methodology provides uh, scientifically sound findings, whereas a poor methodology doesn't. Next slide, please. OK. 
Okay. So as research methodology is the plan and structure of investigation of an aim or problem or relaying, so different techniques are applied to get the answers of desired question. So methodology is the theory of how research should be undertaken, including the theoretical and philosophical assumptions on which research is based and the implications of these for the method or methods adopted. So according to the Kaplan's discussion, he was a philosopher. Uh, and according to his discussion of this concept in the conduct of inquiry, he distinguishes several senses of methodology. First, um, techniques, the specific procedures used in a given science. Second, honorifics, a ritual uh, invocation attesting to concern with meeting standards of scientific acceptability. Third, epistemology, involving the most basic philosophical question about the pursuit of truth. So research, and the next slide, please. OK, so research methodology is the overall process guiding the entire research project. Uh, you know, another way to look at methodology is uh, is to call it the primary evidence generation mechanism, primary evidence generation mechanism. So it is also an activity which is time consuming. So I'm using this similar proficiencies. So my main purpose of the research is to focus on the information technology and its effects at the time of its introduction on the workplaces. So I'm also analyzing the difference among the condition of the workplace before and after the introduction of information technology. So I'm also researching on the techniques such as computers, uh, digital cameras, automated chains, uh, which are used in workplace. So research philosophies, what are the research philosophies? All research is based on assumptions about how the world is perceived and how we can best come to understand it. And these assumptions are established on research philosophies. So these assumptions uh, will underpin the research strategy and the methods choose as a part of that strategy. So, you know, according to Saunders, research philosophy is overarching term relating to the development of knowledge and the nature of that knowledge in relation to research. Then Johnson and Clark uh, argues that the vital issue is not so much whether the research should be philosophically informed, but it is how well we are able to reflect upon our philosophical choices. So my research will affect uh, my research will reflect two research philosophies, which are ontology and epistemology. So, th for example, this uh, these assumptions consist of a stance towards the nature of reality, which is ontology, and how the researcher knows that she or he knows, which is epistemology. So first, I'll explain ontology, the philosophy which is related to the nature of reality and its characteristics. So this philosophy raises the assumptions researchers have about the way the world operates and the commitment held to particular views. So ontology has two aspects, objectivism and subjectivism, which will both have their devotees among business and management researchers. Now, what is objectivism and subjectivism? See, objectivism, an ontological position that asserts, uh, that, that asserts that social entities exist in a reality external to and independent of social actors concerned with their existence, which is objectivism. And subjectivism, what is subjectivism? An ontological position that asserts that entities are created from the perceptions and consequent actions of those social actors responsible for their creation. So an extreme form, it may hold that the nature and existence of every object depends solely on someone's subjective awareness of it. So subjectivism is a philosophical tenet that accords primary to subjective experience as fundamental of all measure and law. So in an extreme form, it may hold that the nature and existence of every object depends solely on someone's subjective awareness of it. So this is about subjectivism. Now next, next comes epistemology. See, epistemology is concerned, you know, with the study of knowledge and what we accept as being valid knowledge. So the relationship between the researcher and that which is being researched is involved in this philosophy. 
So the longer researchers stay in the field or get to know the participants, the more they know what they know from first-hand information. So epistemology is further categorized into three subcategories, positivism, realism, and interpretiv uh, interpretivism. So first, positivism. What is positivism? See, as my research reflects the philosophy of positivism in which I will adopt the philosophical stance of the natural scientist. So positivism is epistemological position that advocates working with an observation social reality. So the emphasis is only highly structured methodology to facilitate replication and the end product can be low uh, can be law like generalization similar to those product produced by the physical and uh, natural scientist then comes realism realism is another philosophical uh, philosophical position which relates to scientific inquiry so it is the epistemological position that objects exist independently of our knowledge of their existence so the philosophy of realism is that there is a reality quite independent of the human mind um, is somewhat similar to positivism in that it assumes a scientific approach development of knowledge so there are two forms of realism direct realism and critical realism direct realism is the epistemological position that what we see is what we get and what we experience through our senses portrays the world accurately another form is critical realism which is also the epistemological position that what we experience are sensations, the images of the real world, not the things directly. So this is about realism. Then comes interpretivism. So interpretivism advocates the necessity to understand difference between humans in their role as social actors. So the emphasis of this philosophical research is on the people rather than objects such as trucks or computers so and so etc i'm just taking one example uh, so the heritage of this strand of interpretivism comes from two intellectual traditions phenomenology and symbolic interactionism so phenomenology refers to the way in which human makes sense of the world around whereas in symbolic interactionism we are in a continual process of interpreting the social world around us. So these are this is about you know positivism, realism, interpretivism. Okay, this is under epistemology. Now, uh, next slide, please. Okay. So before I go to why is research methodology important? I would like to throw some light on first a uh, research approach. Now see, research approach, what is research approach basically? So research approach refers to the approach or the methodology that has been adopted to conduct the research. So it basically involves the selection of research questions, the conceptual framework that has to be adopted, the selection of appropriate research method, such as primary research, secondary research, etc. And research can be distinguished as belonging to one of two models, a deductive or, or you can say top down approach or an inductive, which is bottom up approach. So deductive approach is one in which uh, a theory and hypothesis or hypothesis are formulated and then a research strategy is planned or uh, to to test these hypotheses whereas an inductive approach data is gathered and the theory is developed as a outcome of the data analysis so my research will be carried out through the inductive approach in which i will collect data from different resources and develops a theory as a result of data analysis so an uh, inductive uh, approach is radically different from the deductive type so I have chosen the inductive approach because it does not have the same conclusions. So to induce something is to draw a conclusion from one or more particular facts or pieces of evidence. So the conclusion explains the facts support the conclusion. Then comes, so this is about research approach. Then come research strategy. So my research uh, is explanatory in which i am examining the relationship between variables which are uh, which are information technology workplace and the people so in order to get a clear view of the relationship i will collect first 
the qualitative data to explain the reason that how the information technology has impacted the workplace. Here I'm taking the example of IT. So my strategy for this work is grounded theory. Okay, now see research strategy. So grounded theory is often thought of as a best example of the inductive approach, developing and building method. So grounded theory is according to uh, Golding, particularly helpful for research to predict and explain behavior. So the emphasis being upon developing and building theory. So grounded theory is a research strategy in which they, uh, in which theory is developed from data generated by a series of observation or interviews, principally involving an inductive approach. So definition, this is the definition by uh, Saunders. Then according to Stern, he was a great philosopher uh, for this theory. So grounder, according to Stern, grounded theory is one of the uh, interpretative methods that share the common philosophy of phenomenology, that is methods that are used to describe the world of the person or persons under study. So a key idea is that this theory development does not come off the shelf, but rather is generated or grounded in data from participants who have experienced the process. So the roots of grounded theory can be traced back to a movement known as symbolic interactionism, which I already explained, whose origins lie in the work of you know, Charles Cooley and George Herbert Mead. So the concern of these scholars was to avoid the polarities of psychology uh, and so grounded theory was originally developed in the 1960s by two American sociology scholars, focusing largely on the health nursing field. So Barney then comes Glasser and Anelzum Stratos are, uh, you know, and, and started to become well known with the publishing of their book, Discovery of Grounded Theory. So you can read the, the, those books for better uh, information. So in grounded theory, what happens generally? Data collection starts without the formation of initial theoretical framework. The theory is developed from data generated by a series of observation. And these data lead to the generation of predictions, which are then tested in further observation that may confirm or otherwise the predictions. So methodology uses a systematic set of procedures to develop an inductively derived grounded theory about a phenomena. So the findings of the research constitute a theoretical formation of the reality under investigation rather than consisting uh, of a set of numbers or a group of loosely related themes. So the objectives of grounded theory. See, essentially the objective in grounded theory is to build mid-range theory. So the emphasis on building effective and complex theory uh, grounded, uh, grounded in data at various levels uh, of generality characteristics is most important purpose. So grounded theory is predicted on the, on the idea that social science theory can be built from data systematically uh, obtained in a social setting. So theory emerges very deep and uh, contemplative analysis of data obtained in the field rather than from a prior assumptions developed before the research begins. So grounded theory, researchers aim to develop theories that enable explanation of behavior are applicable in practice and provide hypotheses that can be verified. So two features of grounded theory that help set it apart from other qualitative methods. First feature, it is not limited to description of the phenomena, but seeks to develop theoretical concepts. And second, it is not bound to a particular unit of analysis, time or place. So this allows researchers to develop a grounded theory and apply and test it in areas outside the original study. So the grounded theory perspective of what constitutes a theory is defined by you know uh, Strauss and Corbin uh, as a set of well-developed concepts. Grounded theory is a set of well-developed concepts related to statements of relationship, which together constitute an integrated framework that can be used to explain or predict phenomena. So theory is constructed from conceptual categories and their properties. Now next is uh, why is research methodology important? See, a research methodology gives research legitimacy and provides scientifically sound findings. So it also provides a detailed plan that helps to keep researchers on track, making the process smooth, effective, and manageable. So a researcher's method the reader to understand the approach and methods used to reach conclusions. Next slide, please. A 
Okay. So before this, I would like to explain research choice. What is research choice? Or you can say research choice method. See, the way in which a researcher chooses to combine the qualitative and quantitative techniques and procedures is said to be research choice. So research choice uh, can also be said as research design. Research choice is categorized into two types, mono and multiple method. The so monotype method is that in which uh, we use single data collection technique and corresponding analysis procedures. Whereas multiple method is that in which more than one type of data collection technique and analysis procedures are used. So in business research, for example, mostly multiple methods is used for the combination of quantitative and qualitative techniques and procedures as well as for primary and secondary data. So multiple methods are further categorized into multi methods and mixed methods. So multi, multi method is a term refers to those mixtures where associated analysis techniques use more than one data collection technique. But this method is limited within either uh, a qualitative or a quantitative worldview. So my business research will reflect multi method qualitative research studies in which I will collect my data while using qualitative techniques, which is interview. As my data is qualitative, so I will analysis it by using qualitative procedure. Then comes time horizon. What is time horizon? There are generally two time horizons for the research strategy. The one is cross-sectional, in which the study of particular phenomena is conducted at particular time period. And the other is longitudinal studies, which is, as stated by Saunders, a series of snapshots and also said to be a diary that involves repeated observations of the same items over a long period of time, often many decades also. So uh, for my research project, the limited time period is provided. And according to specific time period, I will consider cross-sectional studies in which I will take a snapshot of IT information technology in the workplace. Now, data collection procedures. So before that, well, this is very important. You know, having a sound research methodology uh, in place provides the following benefits. What are the benefits? Other first, other researchers who want to replicate the research have enough information to do so. Second, researchers who receive criticism can refer to the methodology and explain their approach, and it can help provide researchers with a specific plan to follow throughout their research. So the methodology design process helps researchers select the correct methods for the objectives. It allows uh, researchers to uh, document what they intend to achieve with the research from the outset. Next slide, please. OK. So types of research methodology. Before that, I will explain data collection procedures. OK, so I will use different categories of procedures for my research. To achieve the research aim, a mixed method qualitative approach will be adopted. So first is primary data. What is primary data? The primary research is that when source is an original document containing first-hand information about a topic, for example, diaries, interviews, letters, original works of art, photographs, or works of literature, I will be collecting my primary data by interviewing with different, here I'm taking example. OK, so I'll be collecting my primary uh, data by interviewing with different people working in different places. So according to Zygmunt, you know, it, what is interview? Interview is the method of collecting information through face to face contact with the individuals. Now, I'll explain in detail what is interviewing. So I will collect my primary data by interviewing personals from different people working in different workplaces, such as banks, hospitals, offices, educational sectors, retail business industries, etc. And an interview is what is a powerful discussion between two or more people. So the use of interviews can help to gather valid and reliable data that are relevant to research questions and objectives. So interviews are uh, you know, associated with the positivist and phenomenological methods, which I explained earlier. So they are the methods of collecting data in which selected participants are asked questions in order to find out what they do, think, or feel. 
So interviews um, make it easy to compare answers and maybe face to face, voice to voice, or screen to screen conducted with individuals or a group of individuals. So interview maybe highlight uh, highly formulated or formalized and structure or they have they may be informal and unstructured so in between there are intermediate positions also one typology that is commonly used is thus related to the level of formality and structure where, whereby interviews may be uh, categorized as one of structure interviews semi-structure interviews unstructured or in-depth interviews these are the types of interviews so uh, here i'm taking example of semi-structure interview in which i will have a list of all the questions to be covered during interview so semi-structured interviews are non-standardized and are often referred to as qualitative research interviews. So although the response may be vary from interview to interview, I may also omit or add some question according to the flow of conversation. This is important. So the major advantage of this strategy is that with the more natural discussion, the greater details and variety can be provided by respondents. So I will consider the individuals from any firms, organizations, government, whether it is government or a non-profit organization, banks and the other places which are located in so and so place. So I will conduct face to face interviews from individuals and take the notes of the responses which are given by respondent. So in these interviews, I will ask them that what latest technology they are using in their workplace and what are the benefits or drawbacks of technological advancement and how these technologies are making the workplace better from the previous time. So this is about primary data in which I explain interviewing. Then comes secondary data. See, secondary research is that when someone else has collected the data and the researcher interprets and analyzes primary sources. So the secondary data uh, you know, included. Uh, so secondary data uh, included both qualitative and quantitative data, and they are used principally in both uh, descriptive and explanatory uh, uh, explanatory uh, research. So when secondary data is used, it is easy to build a research on the past collected information of business knowledge, which is gathered by others' experiences. So the advantage of using secondary data is that it can be obtained rapidly and is less expensive as compared to collect primary data. So in contrast, some disadvantage of secondary data is that they were not designed specifically to meet the researcher's need and user has no control over their accuracy. They may, may also be inaccurate. Uh, inaccurate. So different researchers have uh, generated a variety of classifications for the secondary data. You know, these classifications do not, however, capture the full variety of data. So the three main subgroups are created for secondary data, which are documentary data, survey based data, and those compiled from multiple sources. So the secondary data, which which I'm collecting in my research is compiled from multiple sources. So the most important characteristics of secondary sources is that they offer an interpretation of information gathered from primary sources for example dissertation indexes abstracts bibliographies uh, journal articles books newspaper internet etc so now uh, i'll come to types of research methodology so when designing a research methodology a researcher has several decisions to make one of the most important is in which is uh, which data methodology to use, qualitative, quantitative, or a combination of the two. So no matter the type of research, the data gathered will be as number or description, and researchers can choose to focus on collecting words, number, or both. Next slide, please. OK. So before I start with qualitative and quantitative, I would like to explain research ethics. So what are research ethics? You know, ethics, ethics are moral principles, norms or standards of behavior that guide moral choices about behaviors and relationships with others. So in, uh, for example, in business research, ethical issues come to the fore whenever a conflict arises between the desire to conduct research that meets the highest quality standards or the request of the sponsor on the, on the one hand and the societal values like say privacy, freedom and honesty on the other. So ethics is what? Ethics is the study of the right behavior and address the questions of how to conduct research in a moral and responsible way. This is also important. So ethics is also said to be the appropriateness of the research uh, researcher's behavior in relation to the 
rights of those who become the subject of research project or who are affected by it so, uh, situations their uh, parties are involved so the researcher and sponsoring client and the respondents so within business and management research there are two uh, dominant philosophical standpoints dentology and teleology so the dentological view argues that the ends served by the research can never justify the use of research which is unethical so in contrast the teleological view argues that the end served by your research justify the means so consequently the benefits of your research findings would be weighed against the cost of acting unethically so this approach has an added complication as you also need to consider whether the benefits of the research are morally just so when ethics are discussed in research design the first priority uh, is to protect the right of the participant respondent uh, or subject so whether data are gathered in an experiment interview observation or survey the respondent has many rights to be safeguarded in general the research must be designed so uh, a respondent does not suffer physical harm discomfort pain embarrassment or loss of privacy so to safeguard these things i will follow three guidelines first i will explain the benefits of the study then i will explain the participants rights and protection and in the last i will obtain secure informed uh, secure informed consent okay now what are qualitative quantitative and mixed method methodology see qualitative quantitative and mixed methods are different types of methodologies distinguished by whether they focus on words numbers or both so this is a bit of an oversimplification, but it, it's it's a good starting point or understanding. So let's take a closer look. See, qualitative research, you know, involves sorry. Yes, qualitative research involves collecting and analyzing written or spoken words and textual data. It may also focus on body language or visual elements uh, and help to create a detailed uh, description of a researcher's observations. So researchers usually gather qualitative data through interviews, observation, and focus groups using a few carefully chosen participants. So this research methodology is subjective and more time consuming than using quantitative data. So researchers often use a qualitative methodology when the aims and objectives of the research are exploratory. For example, when they perform research to understand human perceptions regarding an event, person, or a product. Next slide, please. Okay. So before quantitative, I would like to more explain about this qualitative. So you know, um, uh, qualitative research, as I said earlier, also refers to research which focuses on collecting and analyzing words, uh, written or maybe spoken. So and textual data also, whereas quantitative research focuses on measurement and testing using numerical data. So qualitative analysis can also focus on other softer data points such as body language or visual elements. So it's quite common for a qualitative methodology to be used when the research aims and objectives are exploratory in nature. So for example, a qualitative methodology might be used to understand people's perceptions about an event that took place or a candidate running for a president these are the example contrasted to this a quantitative methodology is what quantitative methodology is typically used when the research aims and objectives are confirmatory in nature for example a quantitative methodology might be used to measure the relationship between two variables example personality type uh, and likelihood to commit a crime or you know or, or, or to test a set of hypotheses so as you have probably gauged the mixed method methodology attempts to combine the best of both qualitative and quantitative methodologies to integrate perceptives and create a rich picture. So quantitative, we use a quantitative methodology when the objective of the research is to confirm something. So it focuses on collecting, testing, and measuring numerical data, usually from a large sample of uh, participants. So they, uh, they then analyze the data using 
statistical analysis uh, and comparisons. So popular methods used to gather quantitative data are, you know, surveys, questionnaires, studies, databases, organizational records. So this research methodology is objective and is often quicker as researchers use software programs when analyzing the data. An example of how researchers could use a quantitative methodology is to measure the relationship between two variables or test a set of hypotheses. Next slide, please. OK, so this is mixed method. This contemporary research methodology combines quantitative and qualitative approaches to provide additional perspectives, create a richer picture, and present multiple findings. So the quantitative methodology provides definitive facts and figures, while the qualitative provides a human aspect. So this methodology can produce interesting results as, as it presents exact data while also being exploratory. Next slide, please. OK. so. What types of sampling design in research methodology? So before types, I would like to explain what are the main sampling design approaches first. Then we'll see types. So as we mentioned earlier, sampling design is about deciding who you are going to collect your data from. That is your sample. And there are many sample options, but the two main categories of sampling design are probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So probability sampling means that you use a completely random sample from the group of people you are interested in. So this group is called population. So by using a completely random sample, the results of your study will be generalizable to the entire population. In other words, you can expect the same results across the entire group without having to collect data from the entire group, which is often not possible for large groups. So this is about profitability, uh, sorry, probability sampling. Next is non-probability sampling. On the other hand, doesn't use a random sample. For example, it might involve using a convenience sample, which means you would input your survey people that you have access to, perhaps your friend, family, or work colleagues, uh, rather than a truly random sample, which might be difficult to achieve due to resource constraints. So with non-probability uh, sampling, the results are typically not generalizable. You know, so next is types of sampling design in research methodology. So when creating a sample design, the researcher decides from who or what they will collect data. They also choose the techniques and procedures they will use to select items or individuals for the sample. So there are several types of sample design that fall into two main categories. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, non-probability sampling, which I already explained. Next slide, please. OK, now common data collection methods. So once a researcher has finalized their population sample, they need to decide how to collect data. There are several options for data collection, and the best research method to use will depend on the research topic, methodology, type of data, and the population sample. Next slide, please. OK. So what are the main data collection methods? There are many different options in terms of how you go about collecting data for your study. However, these options can be grouped into following types, uh, like interviews, which I explained thoroughly just now, which can be unstructured, semi-structured, or structures, then focus groups or group interviews, surveys, online or physical surveys, observations, documents and records, case studies. So the choice of which data collection method to use depends on your overall research aims and objectives, as well as what Penalties uh, and resource constraints. For example, if your research is exploratory in nature, qualitative methods such as interviews and focus groups would likely be a good fit. Conversely, if your research aims to measure specific variables or test hypotheses, large scale surveys that pro produce large volumes of numerical data would likely to uh, likely be a better fit. So Next is common data collection methods. See, although there are many ways to collect data, people often broadly uh, group them in these ways. Uh, interview. Researchers can carry out interviews in a structure, semi-structured or unstructured format, depending on how format the questions are. Then surveys, surveys can be online or in person and have either free answer essay style uh, uh, questions or closed multiple choice style questions. So depending on the data required, a survey could also uh, use a mixture. Then comes focus group. Focus groups have interviews, uh, give their thoughts, opinions, perspectives, and perceptions on specific topics. So a moderator usually leads 
group to help guide the discussion and ensure everyone speaks. Then comes observations. So direct observation involves observing the spontaneous behavior of participants without interference from the researcher, while participant observation is more structured and the researcher interacts with the participants. Then comes documents and reports. So researchers collect data such as, uh, such as published uh, reports and the official documents or uh, international bodies, government agencies, or private institutes, and, uh, and uh, internal records such as employees, payroll, raw material quantities, and cash receipts. Next slide, please. OK, so common data analysis method, qualitative and quantitative. So researchers use different data analysis method depending on whether the data is uh, qualitative or quantitative. For example, qualitative data analysis. Qualitative data analysis is usually in spoken or written information, such as interview transcripts, video, and audio recording notes, images, and text documents. So qualitative data analysis involves identifying common partners in participants' responses and critically analyzing them to achieve research aims and objectives. So the most commonly used qualitative data analysis methods are content analysis. This is one of the most common methods used to analyze uh, documented information and is usually used to analyze interviews responses. Then comes narrative analysis. So researchers use this method to analyze content from several sources, including interviews, observations, and surveys. It focuses on using people's stories and experiences to answer research questions. Then comes discourse analysis. So this method analyzes spoken or written language in its social context and aims to understand how people use language in a day-to-day -day situations. Then comes grounded theory, which I explained thoroughly. This method uses qualitative data to discover or construct a theory explaining why something happen right? it uses a comparative analysis of data from similar cases in different settings to derive explanations next slide please okay quantitative data analysis quantitative data analysis involves uh, turning numbers into meaningful data by applying rational and critical thinking. Most researchers use analytical software to assist with quantitative data analysis. So the first stage in, analy in analyzing quantitative data is validating, editing, and coding the data. So once completed, the data is ready to analyze. A data uh, is ready to analysis. So the most commonly used quantitative data analysis methods are descriptive uh, analysis. So what is descriptive analysis? So this method uses descriptive statistics like mean, median, mode, percentage, frequency, and range to find patterns. Then comes inferential analysis. So this method shows the relationships between multiple variables using correlation, regression, and variance analysis. Next slide, please. OK. So before the factors, I would like to explain what are the common main data analysis methods. See, the data analysis methods can be grouped according to whether the research is qualitative or quantitative, as I discussed earlier also. So the popular data analysis methods in qualitative research include qualitative content analysis, thematic analysis, discourse analysis, narrative analysis, grounded theory, IPA, qualitative data analysis. Uh, these are the, you know, data analysis methods all begins with data coding after which one or more analysis technique is applied so popular data analysis method is quantitative research include uh, descriptive statistics which i explained example mean medians modes then inter inferential statistics uh, example relation structural equation modeling and again the choice of which data collection method to use depends on your overall research aims and objectives as well as uh, practicalities and resource constraints. So how do I choose a research methodology? This is very important. How do I choose a research methodology? As you have probably uh, picked up by how your research aims and objectives have a you know major influence on the research methodology. So the starting point of developing your research methodology is to take a step back and look at uh, the big picture of your research before you make methodology decisions. So the first question you need to ask yourself is whether your, may, uh, your research is exploratory or confirmatory in nature. So if your research aims and objectives are primarily, uh, primarily exploratory in nature, your research will likely to be qualitative, and therefore you might consider qualitative data collection methods, example, interviews and analysis method, uh, example, qualitative analysis, uh, content analysis. Conversely, if your research aims and objectives are looking to measure or test something that is they are confirmatory then 
uh, your research will quite likely uh, be quantitative in nature and you might consider quantitative data collection methods example surveys and analysis example statistical analysis so designing your research and working out your methodology is a large topic which uh, you know due to time constraint you cannot cover this it's a huge topic so for now however uh, uh, you know the key takeaway is that you should always start with your research aims and objectives and every methodology decisions will follow from that you know then comes factors to be considered when choosing a research methodology so here are some factors to consider when choosing a research methodology first is the research objective so consider the research project objective when researchers know that information they require at the end of the project to meet their objectives. It helps uh, them select the correct methodology and research method. Then comes significance of statistics. Another factor to consider is whether you require uh, concise data given research results and statistical answers, so where, or whether the research questions require an understanding of reasons, perceptions, opinions, and motivations. Then comes nature of the research. You know, if the aims and objectives are exploratory, the research will probably require quantitative data collection methods. However, if the aims and objectives are to measure or test something, the research will require uh, quantitative data collection methods. Then comes sample size. How big does the sample need to be answer the research questions and meet the objectives? So the sample size uh, can be determined your data gathering methods, such as whether to use in-person interviews or, uh, or smaller samples or online surveys for larger ones. Then comes time available. If there are time constraints, consider techniques like random or, or convenient sampling and tools that allow for data collection in a few days. So if there is more time available, person interviews and observations are possible. Next slide, please. Okay, so how to choose best research methodology for your study? So successful research conduction requires proper planning and execution. While there are multiple reasons and aspects behind a successful research completion, choice of best research methodology is one of the most difficult and confusing decisions. So since your research will dictate the kinds of approaches you follow, it is crucial to choose research methodology to underpin your work and methods you use in order to collect data. So the correct choice methodology in research allows you to collect required information and accomplish the final goals of the study. Next slide, please. OK. This I, I think I covered the importance of choosing best research methodology. So research methodology is determined before research conduction. So correct choice of research methodology helps in determining the success and overall quality of your research study and its documentation. Furthermore, becoming familiar with the research methods used by an area of study allows you to understand it more effectively. Next slide, please. Okay, what are the steps to follow while choosing the best research methodology? See, step one, define the goals, objectives, and research question. Before worrying about the in inferences, it is important to draw a path toward conclusive uh, results. So therefore, it is essential to clearly understand what you want to research before deciding upon how to research. So most importantly, determine the variables that need to be studied in order to get an answer to the research question. Sticking to variables will lead you to the final results. Then comes step, step two, refer pertinent research and effectively use methodology. As there are immeasurable uh, ways of conducting research, all may not be uh, main for your study. Furthermore, determining the best research methodology can be difficult if you are not aware of the approach undertaken by other researchers from your field. So therefore, creating pertinent literature in your research area and then evaluating its methodology based on the feasibility and limitations is essential. Next slide, please. Step three, structuring the plan and finding resources to conduct research. So when the research area may be same, the method of data collation may not be. So some may be time consuming, some may be found on the internet, other may, might need field study or might be expensive. So therefore, it is essential to base your decision after giving a thought to these limitations of data collection as well. And step number four, write the research methodology in detail and review it. So after selecting a particular approach to conduct your research, you must make a note of all activities. It must include the approximate time and resources each step might take. So this helps in understanding the approach that your research would take and prepare you for the hurdles on its way to conclusive results. Next slide, please. Okay, reasons to select a specific research methodology. You should select a qualitative research methodology because it uses an inductive 
an open and flexible approach. Qualitative research builds theory. Then world-based data can be collected via interviews and focus groups. And it draws on sample sizes and uses qualitative data analysis techniques, such as content analysis, thematic analysis, which I explained. Then you should select a quantitative research methodology because there are four reasons. It uses a deductive approach and objective approach. In addition, it adopts a close and highly planned approach quantitative research test theories numeric data can be collected via surveys or laboratory instrumental experiments and it draws on large sample sizes and uses statistical data analysis techniques next slide please okay now this is last slide key takeaway how do you summarize a research methodology step one explain your methodological approach you can start by introducing you, your overall approach to your research step two describe your data collection method step three describe your analysis method step four evaluate and justify the methodological choices you made while it may seem that the goal of the research is the primary reason to choose the best research methodology it is essential to consider other factors that influence successful research completion remember that the choice of the most appropriate method and its correct execution is what that drives your research. Next slide, please. Thank you. So with this, I conclude my lecture. And once again, I would like to congratulate uh, Cape Comoran Trust and uh, the Mendy Differ uh, College uh, Meghalaya for inviting me or for giving me opportunity to express my thoughts on this research methods, tools, techniques, and designs. Uh, I hope I'll try to cover all the point because since it is a, it's a very vast topic, but I, I tried to cover it in a short span. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much once again for giving me opportunity. Thank you. Sir, please unmute uh, yourself. Okay. Sir, please unmute yourself. You are not audible. Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm asking. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. Tony, please continue. Yes, I'm done with my presentation. Uh, sir, actually, I'm asking uh, our convener to continue. Actually, he's not audible. Okay, Hello. okay. Yes. Hello. Yeah, 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 sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we okay. are hearing, sir. You're audible okay. now, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, presentation on the important topic related to research methodology, to tools and techniques. I believe our participants have also benefited a lot from the uh, presentation. Thank you, sir, uh, very much. Uh, now, I would like to invite uh, the participants for uh, any query on the presentation. Anyone from the participants? Actually, uh, can I request that if any participant is having questions, they can mail me. I'll answer uh, each okay. and every question because I have another lecture. Actually, okay, okay. On eight fifteen, so I would like to join. So, so I'll ask you one question. So, uh, hello. Yes, yes, you can ask. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first, I want to congratulate you that your presentation was very um, informative, and it really, it it will really help us. So, number second, so uh, the the presentation. So, this presentation. So, uh, will you forward this presentation to us? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. I'm. I already forwarded this presentation to the organizers. Mm -hmm. uh, okay from where you can get okay so and in the near future if we want any help from you regarding publications and all will you please help us yes yes sure i am uh, just uh, note down my number 9769 uh, so just wait because uh, i don't have access to chat in the chat box That's okay okay 97 9769 9769 78 78 Two zero, two zero, five one, five one. Okay, and my, thank this you. is my only WhatsApp number, and my uh, email ID is Pratik. Yeah. P R A T I K Pratik. P A P R A T I K Pratik Mungekar M U N G E K A R M for Mango M U N G E K A R K A R 
So if you have any question regarding any research topic, any proposal, you can ask me on my WhatsApp or email. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Since uh, sir uh, is having another session with other, so uh, we will not yes, be able to. Ask and I will. Uh, I will answer each and every question. Just mail me your queries. I will answer. To each and every query and question. Thank you. Sir, it is a small request. Could you please make it in the chat box, please? It will I don't easy. have access to chat box. Here is uh, showing sir, chat organizer, I'm requesting the organizer, please. Yes. Here is showing chat is not available. So, do you have so number to everyone? Somewhere on list. 9769. If you Google my name, uh, Dr. Pratik Munikar, you get my all the details address, Insta ID, Facebook, contact details, everything. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Just Google my name, Pratik Munikar. Okay, or I'm ripping my number. See. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, 9769. Nine, 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 9769782051. You can Google my name or uh, you can find me on Instagram also, Dr. Pratik Mungekar. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. So you can thank contact you, sir. me anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much, sir.